Hunter Biden went to trial and he lost. And why did he lose? Because he should have lost. The, the The government had the goods on him. You know, I mean, and I don't know why he didn't plead. That's an admission right there that he's he's not sober. Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. Who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, your board certified criminal defense lawyer. Uh, Accompanied by no one other than the content genius behind the plan, behind the camera, behind everything I say and do. Uh, today, uh, we are reacting to Hunter Biden convicted on all three counts. But before we get to our reaction of Hunter Biden, today is brought to you by, guess what? Eforms.com. Eforms.com for every grandma in every basement across the country, across the world, no matter where you are. If you've got a grandma that's um, not doing well and you need to take care of her finances, get a power of attorney. Where do you get that? Eforms.com. You got a grandma who's got an OnlyFans feet page and she's doing like crazy and she needs a business agreement to protect herself? Go to eforms.com. You got a grandma who's in her basement and uh, and she's just getting ready to go out in her crotch rocket, but she wants to sell it. Get a bill of sale from eforms.com. Any form you need for just about any purpose, go to eforms.com. You can avoid an expensive lawyer like me and you also avoid the courtroom. Eforms.com, very effective way to protect yourself. So any form you need, go to eforms.com. Okay. What was Hunter Biden charged with? Hunter Biden was charged with possessing a firearm or purchasing a firearm, lying on the on the form, being a drug addict. That's it. And I can tell you, in 26 years of practice, I've had a lot of gun cases over the years. A lot of gun cases related to drugs. But I've never once had a case where I had a gun case related to being a drug addict. It just doesn't get prosecuted very often at all. So what is the big deal? Who gives a shit, right? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So really the crime is filling out a form, you know, because when you, when you, when you go to purchase a firearm, they do a background check on you, and you can't have you know mental health problems. You can't, or certain mental health problems, and you can't have uh, you can't be a drug addict. And you have to check a box on a form, and the answer is no, because otherwise you wouldn't get the uh, you wouldn't get the firearm. So in October 12, 2018, Hunter Biden goes in and he purchases a firearm. Why did he need to buy a gun? Who knows? I'm not a huge fan of guns. I have several guns of mine, as you can plainly see. Uh, but I think people feel a sense of security with a firearm, and they wind up getting it. And maybe it's just because I see people when at their worst, and they see the, that end of it. But he go he walks into this gun shop, the StarQuest uh, Shooters, and he he buys the firearm. He um, and so you can see here on the form. He checks the box. No. But here's here's the problem. And I and this is why I don't understand why they went to trial in this case. This case was not a difficult case. You know, Abby Lowell, which, who is Hunter Biden's lawyer, phenomenal lawyer. But it doesn't really matter who your lawyer is when you don't have the fucking facts. You know, people think, oh, he's got the best lawyer. He's going to walk doesn't happen that way. So what we have here is a situation where he purchases a firearm and the allegation is at the time he was a drug addict. There's no question that he was a drug addict at some point. I mean, he may have cleaned himself up since then, but he was a drug addict back then. And if you look at these text messages, so first of all, there's a video here we'll show you. Um, Hallie finds the gun in his unlocked car and she throws it away. And Probably not the smartest thing to do to throw it in a fucking trash bin at the grocery store. I mean, <laughs> tell me that's not going to get in somebody's hands. Of course it is. There's another thing she could have done. But regardless, she tried to do the right thing. And getting the gun out of his hands was the right thing. When did that happen? That happened on the 23rd of October. He purchased the gun on October uh, 18th. 
2018. And she finds it on October 23rd, which is just five days later. So one of Abby Lowell's comments in his closing argument was that they, the government didn't prove that at this exact point in time he was a drug addict. But let's kind of look at the text messages between Hallie. Did you take, let's see, did you take that from me, Hallie? Are you insane? Tell me now. This is no game, and you're being totally irresponsible and unhinged. Tell me now, Haley. You really need to help me think uh, right now. This is very serious. So that's that. And then she says to him, call me. I, I can't believe, and this is what happens when you're dealing with drug addicts, honestly, because they blame you for everything. They lie, they cheat, they steal, they do all this stuff. I can't believe this. You blame me all you want. I know it was stupid, but your part is dangerous and negligent. But And because of this and my stupidity for being worried about you, I'm dealing with insanity and possibly I'm going to be the one getting in trouble. Check yourself into local rehab, Hunter. Uh, this has all got to stop. Don't run away again. Please don't leave. This is somebody that cares about him. You know, uh, police are coming to talk to me now. I'll take the full blame. I don't want to live like this anymore. This is too much for me to handle. When you're dealing with somebody who's really destroying themselves with drugs, it is impossible to to um, to rationalize or, or to have a, a reasonable argument with them. They, nothing is their fault. Everything is your fault. They're all, you're always, they're always the victim. And, and, and this is her telling him to go to rehab contemporaneously with her throwing this fucking firearm away. That same day, he says, the fucking FBI, Haley, it's hard to believe anyone is that stupid. Uh, so what's my fault here, Hallie, that you speak, uh, that you speak of owning a gun that's in a locked car hidden on another property. You say I invade your privacy. What more can I do than come back to you and try again? And you do this who in their right mind would trust you, uh, would help me get sober. That's an admission right there that he's, he's not fucking sober, that he's a drug addict at the time. This is October 23rd. It, he bought the gun not even five days before. Then he says, do you want me dead? She says, I want you safe. You know, uh, that was not safe. And it was open, unlocked, and the window's down, and the kids search your car. So the kids go through your car. I mean, th that's that's a, that can be a whole other state crime right there. You have lost your mind, Hunter. I'm sorry. I handled it poorly today, but you are in huge denial about yourself, about the reality that I just want you safe. You run away like a child and blame me for your shit. I mean, that, I, I don't need to get into their, their, you know, personal stuff. I mean, it's all over the place now. But, but it is, you know, it's impossible when you're dealing with somebody that is like this. This is just a few days before. This is on the 13th of October. Why won't you answer my, uh, let's see, Hallie says, why won't you answer my calls? Where are you? Are you with someone? And he says, yes, Bernard, who hangs out at 7-Eleven on Green Hill in Lancaster. I'm now off MD, uh, at Maryland Avenue behind Blue Rock Stadium, waiting for a dealer named Mookie. His brother L is getting in the car right now. He has my money, uh, yeah, he has my money. Mad, I'm getting pissed. So he's wait. I mean, he tells Hallie he's waiting for his dealer. That's before and after. I called you 500 times in the past. I mean, this is just sad. Honestly, I called you 500 times. Last Imagine the, the the turmoil that Hallie Biden is going through. I called you 500 times in the past 24 hours, and and no answer. Practice what you preach. And he says to her. I was sleeping on a car, smoking crack on 4th Street and Rodney. I, why did they go to trial in this case? I mean, the, if, you, if you look just at this little bit of evidence, they really sandwich between the time frame where he bought the gun with him smoking crack in a car and falling asleep 
to afterwards her throwing the gun away, saying you need to go to rehab. I, I don't know what Abby Lowell was, I mean, he, he didn't really have much to argue in this case. And so I think it would have been much better if he pled guilty in this case. There's no reason to try this case. And one of the things that you get when you plead guilty is credit for acceptance of responsibility. You get three levels down. He's got no criminal history. You know, even with the trial, I think, you know, the judge isn't going to want to impose a trial tax on him, which means you get a stiffer sentence if you go to trial. If he's clean now, you know, which hopefully he is, this law enforcement interaction probably spurred his sobriety. But if you want to know the true cost of this stuff, look at look at the cash withdrawals. This is on Exhibit 27A. Um, I mean, it's just $150,000 of cash withdrawals. That I mean, that's staggering. So that's just like September, September through October. 150 grand in, in just such a short period of time. But one of the things that this shows is you've got all these cash withdrawals. This is all in that time period. And you got $2,800 right on the day that he purchased the firearm. And then $5,800 the next day. You know, it's just constant. I mean, who withdraws, withdraws that much cash on a daily basis? I can tell you who does. People who drew drugs. Because guess what? Drug dealers don't take credit cards. They just don't. They, you know, they, and so when, you, when you're looking at this, it's just sad. It's just absolutely sad. But thank God he is not dead. You know, I mean, it's, you know, there's some people will say, you know, whatever. But, but, you know, he's got children. He's got, you know, people that care about him. And his dad's the president. And, you know, his dad could have put a stop to this, by the way, if he wanted to just pardon him. And, and, but he didn't do that. So there's no involvement in, uh, from top down. This is a trial that, that went to, this is a case that went to trial and he lost. I just don't know why they went to trial. Because they weren't going to win this case no matter what. And he should have just pled. Because if you plead guilty, you get credit for acceptance or responsibility. You get three-level reduction. And um, and then you can look like you have remorse and all that kind of stuff. And it's really, to be quite frank with you, if they appeal this to the Supreme, Supreme might take this up, saying that that, that question on the form was unconstitutional because it infringed upon you, your Second Amendment rights. The Second Amendment is uh, has been um, interpreted by the Supreme Court as an absolute right, and they have done away with a lot of regulations. New York, uh, you know, in the Baird case, and then the Heller case. Uh, so they had a conservative Supreme Court has really upheld the Second Amendment. So he may have a shot there, but it's it's probably not likely. What's going to happen with him now? Well, now what will happen is he'll have to go to a probation officer. Probation officer will create a, well, a pre-sentence report, and that is a report about your background, your finances, uh, the offense, your drug history, marital history, family history, um, therapy, anything that you've gone through. And hopefully he's already gone through treatment and he's sober now. I, w I would bet that he is. And then they prepare this report for the judge. Then the, the both sides... Uh, submit a, a, a position in writing as to what they think the sentence should be. I, he won't get more than six months. This this statute is never used. It, it's just not prosecuted. You know, and sometimes sometimes law enforcement intervention actually saves lives. And this could have been the case here. You know, what did, what did Hallie think she was going to do? You know, just you know, it, it's an impossible situation for her, right? I mean, when you have a situation where you're, you're, try, you're pleading with your husband, who used to be your brother-in-law, um, you're pleading with him to stop doing crack and whores, I mean, you just got to, what are you going to do? You know, stop doing whores, stop doing crack, please, please, please. You know, I mean, when you're on a self-destructive path, you don't fucking listen to anybody. When you're doing drugs, you don't listen to anybody. Everybody is the devil. You're just, you're just fucking with me you know and it's just and so this law enforcement intervention hopefully got him sober and hopefully lives to be a better person on another day so if you are struggling with drug addiction and there's plenty of you out there 
You know, I've dealt with family members myself. I know what it's like, you know, and I know how maddening it can be. Support them. Don't abandon them. Uh, but don't take shit from them either, you know. I mean, just be there. At, and when somebody gets busted, guess what he's going to have to do now? He's going to have to drop you A's. He's going to have to be sober. If he needs treatment, he's going to have to go to treatment or go to jail, one of the two. And so to that end, I applaud uh, law enforcement for saving a life. Even if he doesn't get a lot of time, he still is going to be punished. You know, he's going to be on probation. You can't go and do whatever you want whenever you want when you're on probation. He's going to have a felony on his record, which impacts all kinds of rights. Won't be able to buy a firearm ever again. And, um, and he'll just have to be accountable to, you know, a probation office. But we'll, we'll just follow this and, and see what happens. But, you know, um, Joe Biden could have stepped in at any, and he could step in right now. And he said he's not going to. So when you say the system's rigged, bullshit that the system's rigged. It's not rigged. You know, Hunter Biden went to trial and he fucking lost. And why did he lose? Because he should have lost. The, the, the government had the goods on him. You know, I mean, and I don't know why he didn't plead. You know, he, it, it seems to me that there was a real fight between the prosecutor and the defense lawyer. And, uh, and this is more... V- something to do with that he was ready to plead at one point and the judge kicked the deal because it, it was supposed to be a global deal and it turned out not to be but he should he sh- either way he should have just done a straight plea at that point so we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts i'm bruce rivers your personal board certified criminal defense lawyer we'll see you next time on criminal lawyer reacts make sure you subscribe follow us on instagram follow us on twitter sign up for patreon and we'll see you next time here on criminal lawyer reacts Bruce Rivers just broke down your case He know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self snitching gon' get you put away Bruce Rivers just broke down your case He know all the charges that you about to face You ain't coming home till 2058 That self snitching gon' get you put away 23 hour lockdown, please is that my god